What's up guys, Asian here again with another fairy crafting video and today we're going to be discussing uh, the inclusion of Minor Courage from one of the sets in Elsewhere as well as how much DPS you should anticipate getting with the introduction of Minor Courage. Uh, so there is a, we did have a sneak peek at the new sets that are being introduced in Elsewhere and one of the sets from the new Trial Sunspire includes Minor Courage as one of its five pieces. So it is a heavier armor set. I don't have the exact bonuses directly in front of me, uh, but the five piece is does give you Minor Courage whenever the tank happens to taunt an enemy and it's applied to uh, pretty much everybody in the raid group. So all 12 people there. I think there is a range of about 20 of 28 meters, um, which is pretty much exact same range as Evan. So a tank taunts very often, uh, so you're pretty much going to have 100% uptime on a Minor Courage now on top of Major Courage. Now, right now, the value that was given for Minor Courage was 129 weapon and spell damage. So just a little bit over uh, half of what Major Courage currently gives, which is 258 weapon and spell damage. Uh, so... I decided to go ahead and update our ability metric calculator, which you guys can see here, uh, with the new buff. So I added in minor courage as well as major vulnerability. Now I've already talked a little bit about major vulnerability in a previous video, uh, kind of going over how that ultimate compares to the Warhorn ultimate on a support necromancer, so a necromancer tank or a necromancer healer. Uh, but this video, we're taking a look at minor courage on a DPS. So before we get started, I did take a look at both Magicka and Stamina. So the builds that I used to kind of compare these two. So the builds were exactly the same across uh, both of them. Uh, so for the Magicka DPS, this is the build that I went with. So I am assuming that we're running a Magicka Nightblade. Same thing with Stamina. We're doing Stamina Nightblade here. Uh, but for Magicka Nightblade, I assume that we are running Mother's Sorrow on the body. We are running two One Piece crit sets. So we're not running Zahn or anything like that. So we do have a little bit of additional spell crit here. I assume we're running all three Bloodthirsty, and I'm assuming we are running Master Architect as our front bar set here. So I did take the spell crit value here, so 75, and I basically uh, assumed, because this is on the front bar, obviously when we go to our back bar, it's going to be a little bit lower. So you can see here when we swap to our uh, back bar, it's going to be closer to 71, uh, but that's, uh, that's because we don't have Major Prophecy active. Um, so... Rather than just take this flat 75, I decided to take the more realistic version, which is around 72% crit chance, something like that. I did a very similar thing here uh, with the stamina. So on our front bar, because we have the double daggers, we have 83.8% weapon crit. But if we go to our back bar, we see it's a lot lower, 73. So I took a relative average of around 80%, just because we're going to be try to be on our front bar as often as we can uh, as a stamina DPS. Um, then for stamina DPS, I just assume we're running the typical Valdreth, Reliquin, and Advanced Okada with two daggers, and I am assuming that we are running a Nern Honed front bar here, a main hand, I should say, uh, instead of a double sharpen. The math will change a little bit if we're doing double sharpen, just because we can add in a little bit of additional CPs uh, to uh precise strikes as well as mighty but for the purposes of this particular video we're just going to take a look at nerd honed and sharpened so we're going to go ahead and take a look right now uh so google uh, docs is a little bit slow here um just probably because there's a lot of calculations that are happening behind the scenes here so this right here are the assumptions that i decided to make i do need to update the crit chance here uh so this should be close to 7.72 uh, so these are the assumptions that I made here. So we have all points in the magic kit. We're running Clockwork Switches Filet. Uh, could just... Uh, we're running a Dunmer just because those are our, my tunes are Dunmer, but we can obviously change this to Altmer. The results will not change too much because it's not that big of a max magic change here. Again, apologies for the slow uh, movement here, but I think it's just because of all the calculations that are happening uh, behind the scenes here. So... We have two max magic bonuses, and we are assuming that we have pretty much most of our buffs active. So we have Warhorn, so that's where uh, the additional 10% max magic comes from. Uh, and then over here, I am assuming that we have 33% major force uptime between everybody. I know that's a little bit on the conservative side. Um, a lot of the better groups are able to get closer to like 40-45% major force uptime. But I decided to stick with like around... 33% uptime or, or so. Uh, obviously, I can adjust this as needed. Uh, so that gives us a average crit damage of about 97 uh, before we include things like the Thief or the Shadow. Um, and so then, of course, we also assume that we have 100% uptime minor vulnerability, 100% uptime on minor berserk. 
100% uptime minus Slayer because we are running um, Master, uh, Master Architect. And then for Major Slayer, because we are running Master Architect, you're able to give yourself around 40 to 45% Major Slayer uptime. So we included that as well. So everything here pretty much is exactly the same on the second sheet here. The only difference is the inclusion of Minor Courage here. It's a 100% uptime versus on our first sheet here where we have no uptime on Minor Courage. So this will give us a good comparison, uh, or I should say, an exact comparison of the difference in the building metric uh, between once we have our uh, major minor courage uh, for magic DPS. And we did the exact same thing over here with stamina DPS. Everything's exactly the same. We're an orc. We have six different points in the stamina. Sigic, we're running Warhorn. All the same assumptions are happening here. Uh, we are assuming that we are hitting the pen cap with both builds. Um, we did drop mighty a little bit because because that's I'm just kind of taking. Uh, using the CP that I run on uh, my build, so it's about 61 piercing six, uh, around there, so 49 mighty, so that's why we have 11% versus 13% from Ellie Expert. Um, and again, exact same things here. Uh, minor Berserk, 100%, Minor Vulnerability, 100%, as long as all these things are constant, and the only thing we're changing is the Minor Courage uptime. So we have no Minor Courage here. On the second sheet, we have full Minor Courage uptime. The comparison should remain accurate. So let's go over first to our set comparison sheet which will give us the percentage difference between uh, the two combinations here we're taking a look at set combo one and set combo two here we have the exact same mundus's so shadow for both and we can see here that with the addition of minor courage we are seeing about a 2.3 percent increase in ability metric for magic dps and for stem dps we're seeing a little bit less 2.2 percent increase in ability metric here uh, so we're taking so if we Again, this is ability metrics, so this is not necessarily comparable to DPS, so it is not accurate to say this would be a 2.3% or 2.2% increase in DPS, but it is a good approximation, so around 2% would be a safe guesstimate uh, to the amount of DPS we can expect to see from the inclusion of Minor Courage. So, to give you guys an idea of how much DPS, of abs uh, I should say... Uh, it's not relative. How much of an absolute increase in DPS this would be? If you're hitting around 50k a DPS, 2% of that would be 1k. So with the addition of minor courage, and if you are hitting 50k, you would be hitting 51k. All else remaining equal. So it's not actually that big of a DPS boost, but it is certainly a DPS boost, and you will definitely notice it. 2% is definitely something that you can notice, uh, especially in raids where you're hitting much higher numbers. Uh, and so that relative difference, I should say the absolute difference becomes a little bit more noticeable that way. Uh, so this is definitely a noticeable DPS increase, but 2% is not that huge of an increase, uh, all things considered. I believe that the shadow buff from Rastone ended up increasing DPS by a larger percentage uh, relative relative increase in, in DPS that way. Now, the other thing that I was interested in was how does this affect infused versus uh, bloodthirsty for jewelry traits? So we take a look here at the bloodthirsty calculator. Uh, we again, we're assuming we're running the shadow and we're gonna be comparing three infused versus three bloodthirsty. Uh, we can also take a look at one infused and two bloodthirsty to kind of see if that made that big of a difference either. Um, and so for stamina DPS, we can see here that even if we do not see an increase in DPS and execute, so this would be, for example, like a two-handed stam DK, uh, not even two-handed stam DK, like stamina DPS, typically speaking, you will see at the very least a little bit of an increase in DPS and execute, even if you don't have an execute ability, uh, just because of the dual wield passives. You can see here that even if we don't have any increase in DPS in execute, Bloodthirsty is still going to be a little bit stronger here, uh, about 20... 0.2% increase, uh, decrease I should say, in total time to kill. And we see a similar pattern, uh, oh, sorry, that is without a minor courage. So with minor courage, now we're on the correct sheet here. Uh, if we do three infused, uh, you can see here that Bloodthirsty still wins out. We're looking at a 0.32% difference in total time to kill here. Again, this is with no increase in DPS. If we increase our DPS and execute, let's say we do 20% more DPS, uh, then we will see a larger increase here. So it is a slight buff uh, to Bloodthirsty relative to 3 Infused, and we see a very similar pattern here with Magicka as well. So if we go ahead and take a look at 3, blood, three Infused versus 3 Bloodthirsty, uh, this is with Minor Courage, we're seeing a 0.14% decrease in total time to kill, uh, versus without but uh, without the minor courage, where it's a much smaller, 0.01% decrease uh, in total time to kill here. 
Again, this is assuming that we're not increasing our DPS and execute. If we are increasing our DPS and execute, which as a Nightblade you certainly should be because you have an execute, then this grab will increase. So again, if we assume that we're increasing by 20% uh, increase in DPS and execute, which is a kind of a fair assumption, uh, you can see here that it's uh, obviously gets bigger, Bloodthirsty becomes a lot stronger. Um, so it's not that big of a difference overall. Uh, so Bloodthirsty is still going to be the jewelry trait of choice, even with the inclusion of Minor Courage here, increasing our overall spell and weapon damage. So that is it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys uh, have any more questions or any comments about this particular topic. Hopefully you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.